Jamie, um, you know, you're playing Paul Conroy, who was also incredibly brave. I mean, he went with Marie on many of her assignments. There was this wonderful sort of com camaraderie between the two of them. Um, because she was difficult, you know, she didn't always get on with these photographers. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and of course you spent a lot of time with him. Um, why did you want to be poor? Um, you know, I, I, firstly, I, I, I knew who Marie Colvin was and I knew, you know, her sort of how infamous she was and um, I didn't know a great deal about her story. Uh, but when I read the script, like anyone who would read the script, and we hope anyone who sees the movie, you're just so compelled by the sort of positions these people put themselves in and, and uh, what they went through to to tell us the truth. And uh, it's, I have a draw to, it's always exciting when you can play a character in a movie that has a message or that you're trying to spread something good and that wasn't always the case sometimes movies are just pure entertainment and um they provide people with a certain whatever um but there's but, other real specter in the fall wasn't exactly somebody who was sort of a message for the good did he say no definitely not <laughs> no definitely not but uh paul a different paul paul conroy was <laughs> yes, yes paul conroy um, was specter and i yeah i i, I love i love the script i was sort of compelled by the story and uh, the opportunity to work with Matt, whose work I loved, and, and Ross, whose work I loved. But now, Paul Corey was actually on the set quite a lot while you were filming this film. Yeah. And sometimes that's very off-putting to actors, to have the real person, you know, present yeah. as you're trying to create, you know, your version of him. Yeah. Was that difficult, having him there? <laughs> <laughs> I almost want these guys to answer that about Paul being on set. But he, yeah, listen, I, I know I think it's only invaluable, to be honest. Like, he, uh, he, I think the plan was he was only meant to come out for a week or two just to sort of get us up and running, give us a bit of advice, and he ended up staying for the entirety of the shoot, and we kept giving him different sort of roles to do in the, <laughs> in, in the sort of, uh, in the crew. And uh, I love Paul, we're very close friends now. Uh, he is like no one I've ever met. Uh, I think he's incapable of saying no to anything in the world, I think, and that is why that's what got him to where he is. That's what got him into so many incredibly tough situations. Um, uh, it's probably made him been the allowance for a lot of fun in his life as well. Yeah. I think he's just this incredible, incredible person and presence. And then there's selfish things like, uh, you know, I'm doing his, he's from Liverpool. I'm not. Uh, very different accent. Uh, Matt's American, Ross is English playing American. Uh, so it's quite nice to have the real person for accent-wise, <laughs> if you were, <laughs> if you're, if you're um, Jamie, obviously Paul Conroy survived that attack, yeah. or he was severely wounded, right? Did he have PTSD after it? 100%. 100%, yeah. yeah. I think that's something he deals with daily. I think he'd readily admit that as well. Um, I don't see a situation how you could be uh, uh, in those places and witnessing those things on any kind of level without PTSD and then that just comes part and parcel and I think there's almost an, an acceptance with people like you know I feel like of the risk uh, you know people ask about is it worth it is it worth giving your life or you know getting severely injured all that to, to report the truth but I think they are these people are totally people like Marie and Paul are totally aware of the risks and that just says so much about them that they're fully do you think do you think it. that um, one photographer I spoke to now at the Sunday Times said that you know he did feel that Marie sometimes pushed the risk factor too far for the photographers and he do you think there was any resentment in Paul that in the fact that you know her bravado in a sense had got him into that situation potentially I mean Paul did say that you know I mean at that exact moment that we've just seen a clip of I mean that the hammer was you know Paul describes it as it wasn't war it was slaughter at that point I mean there was there was nothing good you know that apart from being able to further report the truth there's nothing good about going back um, but they just felt that they needed to and as I say Marie Paul does say that at that point he was feeling there's something not good about this um, but as I said about Paul, he's never said no. Yeah. So if Marie's yeah. telling him we're going back, yeah, he's no, going back. Yeah, that was incredible. And the, the loyalty that he had to, to Marie was, was wonderful. Also, Matt, with Paul Conroy. 
Because, you know, he, he saw all this conflict too. I mean, he must be the walking wounded in terms of his own life, or has he managed to lead, uh, you know, a fulfilled private life, which he never managed to do? I think for Paul, there's a big part of him would still love to be on the front line doing what he does. I mean, he actually had a plan when we were filming in, in Jordan to go on to Yemen and, and keep doing what he you know, had done and uh, he just got himself fit to a point with, through rehabilitation and physio with his leg that he was fit enough to do that but you know he's, he's not really you know and I don't think I think he probably admit now that he won't be able to get into that situation again um, but he has a very strong will to keep trying to yeah. tell the truth and he's got a documentary out that's uh, just about to come out as well that, based on the book that he wrote about uh, events in Syria and Marie's death and his escape from Syria after Marie died. And uh, I think he just wants to, you know, that's within him now. If he, if he can't do it on the front line, he will find whatever way he can to keep getting the message out there.